Today in band tying sessions, I'm gonna show you a super simple trout pattern called a hopper. It can be used as a dry, it can be used as a wet, and it's been super effective down in the lakes here in Tassie for me over the last few days. So to get started, you're gonna need some size 12 nymph hooks, some claret seals fur, a dry fly cape, and also some pheasant tail. To add to that, some black thread to tie it all together. So to get started, I'm gonna pop the hook in the vise and just lay a bed of thread over the top of the shank of the hook, just through the middle. Really quick, effective pattern, this one. So I'm gonna take my thread to the back um, to about where the barb should be, and I'm gonna attach my dubbing. So seal's fur is a little bit hard to get onto because it's a very bristly fiber, but I just wanna dub it onto the thread. And a good trick to know is once you get it in a nice cylinder shape, you can just get the first couple of wraps onto the shank of the hook, and then you can tighten it up a bit and it sort of holds together a lot better that way. And I'm just gonna dub that all the way to about three quarters of the front of the hook towards the eye, just like that. So we need to make a couple of legs out of pheasant tail, like the one I've got here, which I prepared earlier. So I'll show you how to do that now. It's just three strands of pheasant tail. So we'll just pick one, two, three. We'll just chop it at the stem. And all you wanna do is knot it. So you need to create a half hitch with the fiber, just like that. And then thread the thick end back through the hole that you've created. And just get it there, like that. It's a little bit fiddly, but the end result's really, really nice. So as you make your knot, just pull it so it's the right length. Just knot it down like that. So now that we've got our legs made, we can just attach them onto the hook. I like a reasonably long leg, just like that. So I'm gonna do one on one side, like this. Just on the side. And then I'm gonna chop those fibers off, just so they're nice and neat. And then I'm gonna attach the other leg on the other side. And I like the points facing down. So just attach that one in there. Now we need to put our hackle on. So I've got my piece of hackle here. You wanna measure each piece of hackle and I need it to be about that long. So this feather's just right. So I'm gonna chop it part way along. Just pull a few fibers off so that I've got a little pointy stem that I can attach with my thread. So I'll just wrap it on like that. And see how I've left enough room for the head of my fly. There's nothing worse than covering the eye with thread and not being able to tie your, your line on there. So I'm just gonna do three or four wraps of that hackle, just like that. And then tie it off with a couple of wraps over the top of the, the feather before chopping it off. So you can see how the bristles are all facing forward like that. We need to get them to face backwards. So I'm just gonna pull everything back do a few wraps as I head back towards where the fibers are, and then I'm gonna do some loose wraps before coming forward with tighter wraps. So a few loose wraps at the back, and then come forward with tighter wraps. And that'll get all those fibers facing backwards. We'll just tie it off, and then the fly's done. Simple whip finish, and I do like a bit of head cement on all of my flies, makes them last a little bit longer. It's a small dollop, plenty. And that's it. Super effective pattern. The hopper, you can tie them in brown. This one's a claret one, obviously. You can tie them in orange. Heap of different colors, super quick to tie. If you want to fish it as a dry, just simply gink the fly. But if you're gonna nymph with it, don't gink it and it will sit just under the surface. The trout absolutely love them.